and welcome to our service this morning. It's somebody's birthday this week, uh, Helen Hughes' birthday. So let's say happy birthday. In spite of all the chaos in the world, 
God has been moving in a powerful way with the support of your financial gifts and prayer. Even though we're working in the bush area of East Kenya, the government has stipulated the same COVID-19 guidelines for everyone, which has created real hardship for the poor and the widows who cannot pay for regulation masks and hand sanitizer, let alone for food. Then you are supporters of the new school program from September until now, you financially supported all of our new school students' parents to receive an organic school program, which for many of the parents was the first opportunity for them to receive schooling. What a humbling gift. They loved this school and participated in all, all the subjects, such as nutrition, tippy taps, medicinal plants, and this course included building their own double deck gardens at their homes. Each family also received groceries for the duration of school until their own gardens were up and producing. The group became very close as they shared uh, their heartaches and joys with one another. Twenty of these 40 families also worked hard to receive fencing to protect their new gardens from the animals. God also provided funds to complete our new preschool, as well as wonderful cookhouse and washroom for the school and best of standards for that area. The Ministry of Education and Public Health Department were extremely impressed with the quality of our structures and the vision we have for the people of Bura. We are now in the process of building a principal's office for use by our principal and our security guard. New preschool is opening in January, God willing, with an enrollment of 45 at once, and we only need five more sponsors. We've hired two teachers, a security guard, and two cooks. Oliver will stand as our principal for our big school. Our big farm has begun our chicken project, which Peter, our farm manager, has been anxiously waiting to begin. The project will allow us to give the children protein when possible, as well as collect and sell eggs once the project has grown on much. Um, we recently received a Christmas donation to order milk for the children's morning porridge instead of using water. We thrilled to watch the father going his work in such an incredible way. I won't read it anymore, but uh, I'll put this uh, at the back and you can read more. It's an encouraging letter and uh, ways in which we as a church have supported this for some time now. And uh, it's good to hear the way that God is blessing that ministry. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together to worship you. We ask that we might have a sense of your presence with us, and as we bring our praise on the worship that you accept, as we come and worship in spirit and in truth. So bless us and help us as we meet together to hear from you and to be encouraged as we share together. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we say, O come, all ye faithful.
as we come to time of prayer, there's much that we need to be praying about, we need to be aware that uh, there are so many needs and uh, each of us in our own uh, circles have our own concerns and uh, we do need to pray especially that people will become aware of God's presence and the, that Christmas, the celebration that we uh, participate in as we celebrate the coming into the world of God's Son Jesus to be our Saviour that somehow through the conditions that we are in that the presence of Christ will be revealed. So let's each of us where we are bring our own prayers and then I will leave in a prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have this opportunity to gather together this morning to worship you. We come into your presence through that new and living way that was opened for us by your Son, who is our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is present with us. Lord, we have much that we bring to you, many prayers, many Petitions, Lord, you know each and every one of us, and you know those things that weigh heavy upon us. Lord, we pray that we might learn to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. In many different situations, Lord, you present yourself, and we thank you that we are here together this morning. We pray for this town and for this nation that many people will come into a relationship with you will come to understand what it is to have new life through Jesus. That in these days of pandemic that there is hope. Lord we pray that uh, you'll help each of us to stand firm in our faith and to seek you and to find strength from you day by day. Lord as we Look around us and we know that those who are sick, we pray, Lord, that you will touch and heal. For those who are lonely and sad, we pray, Lord, that they might know that we're thinking of them at this time. Lord, there are, we thank you for the work in Kenya and the work of Heartbeat Ministries that we support. We thank you for the encouragement that your work is still going on and that an impact is being made in that community and uh, practical needs are being met as well as the spiritual needs. So we thank you for that ministry and ask your continued blessing upon it. And so as we come to you this morning, Lord, we, we pray that we might hear from you, that we might understand what you want us to know and to, to experience. We pray for those who are sick because of this pandemic. We ask, Lord, for those who are working in difficult situations and uh, have to wear all the equipment, we ask, Lord, that you'll help them. We thank you for them and we pray your special blessing upon them. So again, we just hand all to you. Bring our praise and prayer to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us when to pray to say, Our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom.
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to read from Luke chapter 1, just a few verses from there, from verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who is said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hell country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. God will bless that reading of his word to us. Now we sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. This Christmas is very different, and uh, I'm sure there are many people today who are feeling full of anxiety, and uh, I don't want to keep talking about it, but it is a fact that 
Um, we are being told that we need to stay in place, that we should not mix with other people, and uh, new restrictions are coming into effect tomorrow here in Ontario. And so many people are affected, and there's so much that I believe will cause depression and so much anxiety. This is a time of year when generally people are really excited and uh, looking forward to meeting with family and friends and now they've been told you can't do that. And so it's difficult. A time when uh, gatherings, people get together in, in large numbers to celebrate, in large numbers to to recognize uh, each other and to celebrate with one another. It's very restrictive and it is really a cause for concern. And the, the problem is, I, I believe one of the problems we have is that we have been, we know that there is a pandemic, we know that there is a a nasty virus about. And uh, it seems to me that every time I turn on the television news or put the radio news on, all they can talk about is the pandemic, as if there's nothing else that's taking place in the world. And it's difficult. And my concern is that we as the people of God need to find ways in which we can reach out to these, to the people. We are restricted on how many we can gather together and uh, by law and, and certain churches who are deciding that they want to meet together are going ahead and in effect are getting penalized one way or another. So it's a season that normally uh, is a time of joy. And the question is, where is the joy today? It's difficult to find. Because people are listening to what we are being told. And in, in effect, many are, are just staying put. And many are isolated. But we need to find the joy. We need, as a people of God, to know that He is with us. That despite what is taking place around us, we as individuals can experience something very special, something very precious to us, that can in turn give us joy. I chose this reading because it's interesting. Mary was engaged to be married and here she's visited by the angel and given news that she's going to give birth to a son. And she could not understand how will this be, she said. Then she was told that something very special would take place, that the Holy Spirit would come upon her. And the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. But she was also told about Elizabeth. You see, she was given, she was told that God was going to bless her with a child. And this was she had no relation with anyone other than she was promised to be married to Joseph and here she wondered how could she give birth to a son. But God was at work and God was choosing her to bring into this world his son. And so 
she needed some kind of encouragement. And she was told, even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age. She who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Here she was given encouragement to believe. You see, the message she had was so difficult for her to understand and to, to take in. And though she said, I am the Lord's servant, may your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. But she'd been told about Elizabeth. Elizabeth who had been given up on a hope of a child. But here she was told that Elizabeth was in her sixth month. She who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Here were words that she needed to hear. And so at that, Mary chose to go and investigate. She chose to make her way to visit Elizabeth. It says at this time, at that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hell country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Amazing thing that God works his purposes out. Here he was encouraging Elizabeth. Elizabeth, who was in her sixth month. Elizabeth was having a child, and here was Mary going to, to visit. There were no cell phones in those days. There were no easy way to communicate as we have today. And so Mary went. Because she heard from the angel, she went. I believe it probably to check it out. To find out if what the angel had said was true. And yet the angel had assured her that no word from God would fail. No word from God will ever fail. Those words we need to hold on to, no word from God will ever fail. And here is something that she, she visits and is welcomed by Elizabeth. And the interesting, it's an interesting scenario because she, as she heard, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, it says the baby left in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. Why am I so favoured that the Holy Spirit of my, that the mother of my Lord would come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Here is Elizabeth's reaction. Here are things that are taking place in her life that, that the Holy Spirit comes and in effect brings clarity brings about the reality of, of what is taking place, that Mary had been chosen, and that Elizabeth was recognizing that, that, she, that Mary was going to give birth to someone who is going to be very special. Why should the mother of my Lord come to me? As soon as the Sunday of reached, reached my ears, the babe in my womb leapt for joy. That was the description of what she felt. That the babe, even the babe, was rejoicing. Even the babe was joyful because of this special event that was going to take place. This special one who was going to be born to Mary. Joy. Mary responded as a result of finding out what she had been told was true and then realizing that she 
was truly going to be the one who would give birth to the Son of God. And then she sang Mary's song, The Magnificent, from verses 46 to 55, Mary's response as a result of what is taking place. She glorifies God, she rejoices, she gives thanks to God and wonders at what is being done. And so there was joy, anticipation. Things were not always going to be easy for Mary because now she was going to have to find ways of telling Joseph what was taking place. But God saw to that too because an angel came to Joseph and, and told him. And then when the babe was born, the shepherds were visited by an angel. In chapter 2 of Luke we read this, And then the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And the they, they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared and the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Good news of great joy. Good news of great joy that in Bethlehem a saviour was to be born, had been born. The angel went to find out and they came back and they glorified God as they returned back to their places, back to the hills where they were taking care of the sheep, they rejoiced because a saviour had been born. You see, there is joy. Joy because a saviour had come. We can experience our joy because a saviour has come. Jesus came into this world for you and for me. He came into this world that we might be forgiven. He came that he might go to Calvary, that we might die on a cross. That we might experience forgiveness. That he might be to us Emmanuel. God with us. We have reason to experience joy. We have reason to thank God for the events that we celebrate at this time of year. We have reason. Elizabeth had reason to praise God. Mary had reason to praise God that she was chosen to bring into the world the Son of God. His birth was important. John describes it in this way. We have the account of the birth of Jesus in Matthew and Luke. John records it this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not that light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him, yet to all who did receive him. To those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. And here it is, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So John puts another perspective on it. It is another way in which we need to recognize that we can have joy because we know that Jesus is the Word become flesh. What John is saying is that he was there in the beginning. When this world was created, God spoke and it came into being. John says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. Then here he says, the word became flesh. You see, it's something that is so difficult for us to really take in, but it means that the one who is born in Bethlehem, that babe that was there, was God in the flesh. The Son of God in the flesh. He came into this world in the way in which we came into this world. He was born of a woman, made under the law, and yet he was the eternal Son of God, was with God in the beginning. Here he was. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, talks about joy, but he's asking for the Believers, those who have accepted forgiveness through knowing Jesus. He says this. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Let my joy be complete. Have the same mind as Christ. The miracle of the birth the miracle that was foretold by the prophet of old, that a virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, took place. It's a fact of history. And that one who was born came into the world for you and for me. The sad thing is, what John records is still true today that many do not see the light. This time of year we see lights everywhere. Maybe more at other times. <clears throat> there certainly seem to be quite a number of lights around. People put up lights for Christmas. But the true light, the one who brings light is Jesus, the Son of God that was born to Mary <clears throat> in Bethlehem so many years ago. That babe who was born was none other than God the Son. He came amongst us. He came for us. He identified with us. As John described it, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. Paul describes it in this way. <clears throat> in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, 
who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by coming obedient to death even death on a cross at his birth they were told you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins what that meant was that the eternal son of God that babe that was born in Bethlehem <clears throat> that grew up and then was baptized by John and began his earthly ministry all of that was taking place for people to recognize God was at work to recognize who Jesus was and his teaching to his disciples was that the kingdom of God had come that his kingdom was not of this world the promise that his kingdom would never end and yet what would mean he would subject himself, allow himself to be taken and crucified. It was part of God's plan. A plan we fully, we cannot fully understand. But a plan that we need to get to grips with if we are to experience the presence of God. Because we need him we need to understand that on that cross he paid the price for us he was the only he is the only person who has been born to this world without sin everyone else that has been born into this world was born in sin but he was the perfect son of god he never sinned and so as that lamb without blemish in the Old Testament, the Passover lamb was a lamb that was spotless, that was pure. And it was sacrificed. It was sacrificed in order that the people might go free. Jesus was that lamb of God. Remember John said, Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And so Jesus, as he offered himself on that cross, no one took his life from him. He gave up his life. He said, I give my life for my sheep. He gave his life for us. He surrendered himself that he might bear the weight of our sin on that cross we can't fully take it in Paul said he coming will beat him to death even death on a cross in another letter Paul says cursed is anyone who hangs on the cross he became a curse for us but scripture tells us that how Jesus went through that? How did he pursue that? How did he complete that work that was given to him by his father? As he came up, he grew up as we grew into manhood and then became, became, began his ministry. But then he gave his life. He surrendered his life for us. But then, Scripture says, He who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. He went through that because of the joy that was set before him. What was the joy that was set before him? The joy of knowing that we can be accepted. That he was bringing others into his family that others would receive the gift of eternal life because of his 
sacrifice. And knowing that death could not hold him, he rose victorious over death and is ascended. Paul says, God exalted him to the highest place, gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Joy. Jesus experienced joy, although he went through that for us. Paul asking that we and the people who believed in Jesus give him joy because they see the way in which people's lives are changed. Peter, one of the apostles in one of his letters said this, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. You see, there's so much that we can rejoice about. There's so much we can be thankful for. But that child that was born in Bethlehem came with the sole purpose of being the one through whom we can have forgiveness, through whom we can have access to God, through whom we can be born again by the Spirit of God. We can experience joy. Isaiah, in the Old Testament, one of his, this is what it says, as Isaiah says, in that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you've comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. He's talking that we can continually draw on that which God has provided for us. We can continually draw from him. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. God loves us. We can rejoice. We can experience joy. Even though we may move through difficult times, as Jesus did yet for the joy set before him. In these days, we can experience the presence of God with us. We can be open to his Holy Spirit leading us. But more than that, we can look beyond, beyond this life. Because Jesus came that we might go to be where he is. That we might enter heaven itself. Because of his sacrifice. And so we have that joy because we know that this life is not all that is. That beyond this life there is eternal life with God. The psalmist said, in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. You know, it, it may be difficult for us in these days when we can't really get together in the way which we like to, to rejoice together, to experience the joy of being together. And yet, we can experience his presence. We can look forward to being in his presence for eternity. He has presenced himself with us now by his Holy Spirit, but then we will be in his presence as those who have gone before. We don't mourn as those who have no hope. We know that beyond this life, is something far better, where there are no tears, where there is no sickness, where there is only joy. Something we can look forward to. But until that time, God has placed us where we are, that we might share something of his love with those around us. May we and give thanks 
and learn to experience the joy that he is able to give us. May we continue to trust and not be afraid. And so we're going to sing in closing that hymn, Joy to the World.